Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Tuesday, March 8th, 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. The models are in, and Hunga Tonga has cooled the planet while, while we're looking at 47 states showing snow. But the big story, Arctic blasts will threaten records this weekend. Holy macaroni. Keep calm. It's boom time. I hope you didn't pack away your winter gear yet. A blast of Arctic air is on the way this weekend that will rival some of the coldest mid-March air they've ever seen in central Alabama. The coldest temperatures we will see this weekend arrive Sunday morning. That's when everyone will drop into the mid-20s thanks to a high pressure and clear skies. The record low in Montgomery for March 13th is 24 degrees, set back in 1998. So we'll certainly challenge that. Now, I want to know why all these record colds are during global warming. Hello. <laughs> National Weather Service rates the deadly Iowa tornado as EF4. Initially said it was EF3, and it lasted for nearly 70 miles. A tragedy. Winter set Iowa. The National Weather Service says the devastating winter set Iowa tornado that struck Saturday night has been rated as EF4 and estimated to have produced winds as high as 170 miles per hour. Holy macaroni. Significant winter storm looming in Kansas City. Who will see the most snow? We'll get to the models in just a minute. More snow coming Wednesday for Denver, metro area, and the Colorado Mountains. Some snow in mountains overnight. Snow expected to start Wednesday on the plains. And Thursday, we will be getting crushed in our region. So stay tuned for the update. We're about to get to the models. Wet, messy, messy snow moves in Wednesday, threatening the evening commute. Holy macaroni. Where is this? I don't even know. Oh, it's Boston. So the Northeast also getting snow. We're about to hit the models. And this active weather pattern will produce multiple chances for severe weather and flash flooding, including two to four inches of rain in Georgia. So this is going to be messy, to say the least. And a snowy Wednesday with larger storms looming for the weekend in Boston. So take a look at that forecast if you've got a moment. Now let's take a look at the models here and we'll run them through for you. Here we are Wednesday and you can see some severe weather moving through the southeast skirting out by uh, by the morning here. Some lingering snow in Pennsylvania and this uh, lingering snow here in Colorado is going to start to develop. Here we are Friday. The storm develops Friday and there it starts moving. By Saturday, this baby is going to blow up and along this frontal boundary is where the severe weather threat will be from Pennsylvania all the way down to Louisiana. And the southeast is where that weather threat will be. Uh, low pressure at 998 millibars. Huge swath of snow over 1,500 miles long there. Is going to rapidly devolve into a, a bomb or a bomb out potentially cyclone here in the nor'easter at 979 millibars. And that could be heavy snow on the back end. And, well, that's going to rapidly move up. 949 millibars there. And so let's take a look at the snowfall totals, which look pretty epic. Look at this little bomber here. Mid-March. Whatever's happening there, we're going to keep a close eye on that. <laughs> Holy macaroni. Here is your Tuesday through Wednesday. And Thursday, you're going to be seeing heavy snow. It looks like in uh, large portions of Wyoming, Idaho, Oregon, all these places need snow in the snowpack. So this is good news. Utah, northern Nevada. Northern Colorado getting uh, most of the snow through midday Thursday. And then that's going to drop down into our region during Thursday night. Take a look at that. Heavy snow moving down into northern Arizona, northern New Mexico, central Arizona, central New Mexico, and Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus. We'll see snow Friday into Saturday as the storm develops. All of Arkansas, all of Missouri, all of Tennessee could potentially be smothered in the global warming goodness, including Kentucky getting plucky, West Virginia, Eastern Ohio, Western PA, and Western New York is going to get pummeled on this baby. Hello. Washington, D.C. is going to pick up a little bit of a flurry there, maybe an inch. 
But most of Maryland, Western Maryland, oh, they're going to be seeing significant snow. And ho, 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 it's only going to get deeper in the West as we move into the end of March. Good news for the Sierras and all of the Western states that need the moisture. So awesome news coming in on the models. Severe storms in the southeast tonight and Wednesday. Cold front to spread wintry and windy conditions from the Great Basin to the Plains. Take a look at the map here for your winter storm watches and warnings. Isolated severe thunderstorms will be possible along the Gulf Coast. Very few uh, storm warnings and watches. We have some flood warnings and watches on the Mississippi and other rivers here. So take a quick look at that. Some winter storm watches and warnings up in the northeast and all over the central mountains. Um, just take a look and click on your county. Gusty winds in the southern plains will produce elevated to critical fire weather threats Wednesday. Unseasonably cold temperatures in areas of heavy snow and blustery winds will sweep across the Great Basin and the plains this week and crush the southeast in just a few days. Hey, hey, seismic update. A pretty active seismic pattern worldwide. Nothing significant that we're looking at. What's this right in the center of the crate down there? Gypsum canvas. Kansas, frat quake 3.0, disgusting. Multiple quakes uh, just south of Svalbard, west southwest, 215 kilometers. Uh, multiple four magnitudes here, quite interesting. That could be a sub uh, surface volcanic eruption on the mid ocean ridge, in my opinion. So that, that's happening, warming the oceans ever more in the north. <laughs> what could go wrong? Well, we have multiple volcanic events and let's start talking about them worldwide volcano news update Merapi volcano continuing glowing avalanches that look spectacular from this house this is glowing avalanches from the Merapi summit crater an actively growing lava dome slowly grows and sheds numerous glowing avalanches that descend into the southwestern flank about two kilometers distance from the summit and it's glorious look at the clouds moving over there in the stars Absolutely fantastic. Now, a new volcano you might haven't heard of ever on this channel is San Hudson Volcano in southern Chile in Argentina. Now, there has been some volcanic and seismic unrest, and this is not good news. This is a very significant volcano that has some very significant volcanic history. Now, a volcanic tectonic earthquake has been recorded at 1849 local time today related to the movements of fluids through pre-existing cracks. That was actually yesterday, but Cerro Hudson has recently erupted at VEI-5 back in 1991, just a decade after St. Helens, and has the potential to go to VEI-6 here back in 1890 BC, right before the Dalton Minimum, and 4750 BC, another VEI-6. So this baby goes big. And the last big one, was just in 1991. It erupted at VEI-2 in 2011, but in 91, it was a VEI-5, VEI-3 back in 71, and VEI-6 in 1890, VEI-6 in 47 BC. The last thing we need is a VEI-6, as the Earth has clearly been cooled by Hunga Tonga. Fuego volcano, eruption with pyroclastic flow today. This is a VEI-4 volcano and has been an uptick in fuego. Here is the eruptive history, VEI-2 in 2002, VEI-2 in 99, 1987 VEI-1, nothing significant, a VEI-4 back in 74, VEI-4 back in 32, a VEI-4 in 1857. So, Fuego is just a VEI-4 baby. But Manan went big today, 50,000 foot eruption for Manan. Now, Manan is a, is an, it's an ongoing eruption. From since, is this Manam? Yeah, so we don't have that update. Okay, so here it is 2014 confirmed at VEI 4, another VEI 4 confirmed in 2004, VEI 3 back in 2002, but nothing above VEI 4. So the most eruptive index has been recently, 2014 and 2004. Now we have an ongoing eruption at Manam at VEI-4 again here at the 50,000 foot mark. There was a nice puff, puff pass here. If you compared this to Hunga Tonga, Hunga Tonga's plume, then this is a Manam here, this little island off, the sh off of Papua New Guinea here. <clears throat> it's easy to find this little crease in the northern part of Papua New Guinea. If you look at the main island there, here's the uh, 
border. But Manam, just a, a rapid puff to about 50,000 feet or 15 kilometers, according to many of the telemetries. We do have video, so let's parse that up for you. Post-eruption, my voice is probably breaking up. Japan's agency is studying whether the agency is studying whether the eruption has created any tsunami waves. The Volcanic Ash Advisory Center in Darwin, Australia, est pretty good uh, stills here. Darwin, Australia, estimates that ash emitted by the volcano has risen as high as 15 kilometers. Manam is an island volcano 13 kilometers north of their country's main island of New Guinea. So pretty interesting stuff there. So we have Manam going to 50,000 feet, the highest eruption since Hunga Tonga, and could potentially be just pushing a little bit into the stratosphere there, but literally this is 50 times smaller than Hunga Tonga, maybe 100 times. So completely insignificant except for a local effect, but it certainly does make a great Himawari 8 loop, does it not? I would agree. I can't find out where we are right now, but uh, moving on. Does this Amazon rock art depict extinct Ice Age mammals? We reported on this when it was first discovered about a year ago, and uh, some studies have come out. And the main animal in question, a lot of people thought was a cave sloth or some pre-Younger Dryas event megafauna here, but in fact, it's probably not. And this is quite recent. And even looking at the color, the tonation of the painting, this is not a petroglyph. This is a pictograph. Pictographs are made by using natural pigments um, and actually painting on the pictures, which you're looking at here. But this is simply a giant guinea pig, which is typical of South America. Uh, I believe it's called a capybara. And the paper coming out that, that proves that this pictograph is just a few thousand years old. You're looking at it right here, came, coming out March 7th, yesterday. Ice Age Megafauna Rock Art in the Colombian Amazon. We'll link it below so you can look for yourself and make your, come to your own conclusions. Now, a good friend of the channel, Willie Soon, sent us this paper. Um, because he, it's important for the community to get this information. Now, William Happer is one of the, the main, uh, the two authors here. And he's from Princeton. Wingarten is from York University in Canada. And this paper here that we're going to provide to you for free tonight is a 59-page expose on why global warming is garbage. And so if you're fighting people on the interwebs or you need some information to, to uh, convince someone why the global warming religion is nonsense, you can line them up here with Infrared Forcing by Greenhouse Gases by William Happer and Wingarden, June 18th, 2019. And this paper lays it out on the line. It's very thick and not for the layman, but we're going to link it below for your, play, for your reading pleasure. Now, astronomers have found the second known Earth Trojan asteroid. Sounds a little dirty. But in fact, Trojan asteroids are objects sharing an orbit with a planet, clustered around one or two special gravitationally balanced areas along orbit of the planet known as Lagrange points or Lagrange points, said Cesar Brunsegno, one of the authors of the paper on the discovery. Now, the team of U.S. National Science Foundation researchers used images of the sky's horizon at daybreak captured by the Southern Astrophysical Research Telescope in Chile to study the Trojan asteroid and discovered it's about three times the size of the only other confirmed Trojan asteroid. Now, 2020 XL5 is almost three-fourths of a mile wide. The other Earth Trojan asteroid, 2010, TK7, is 400 yards across, about one-fourth of a mile. Composed of material dating to the origins of the solar system, based on absolutely no information whatsoever, <laughs> Earth... Trojan asteroids offer insights into the building blocks of the galaxy. Now, this these statements are complete 
fucking nonsense. And there is no information or data to support this, except the theory that uh, comets are ice balls from the beginning of the uh, solar system, which every comet we've landed on has no fucking ice. So science is nice these days. Here's the paper if you want to read about the nonsense of the fact that the Trojan asteroids have building blocks of the solar system. Total garbage. Now, you want to hear total facts? Come check out our Rumble, Rumble channel, please, where we have cutting videos, breaking news. Matthew Rosenberg, New York Times journalist, debunked the January 6th uh, deception. Uh, New York Times journalist completely admitting to the fact that everything printed in the New York Times is propaganda. you got to watch that. It's two minutes and 19 seconds. Uh, an earlier video today, double vax, 27 times more likely to get infected with the shit. You've got to look at this and more evidence against the mainstream Ukraine narrative. All in the last 24 hours on our Rumble channel. Blowing minds and blowing yours if you go check it out. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance in a dystopian world that is rapidly getting more dystopian. As gas hits, gas went up a dollar today while I was in town. Diesel is almost at $5. It was three fifty four days ago. And it's only going to hit the moon until you can't move. I hope you have enough food to stay put for a year. I hope you've prepared. I hope you've been listening to what we've been saying. It's happening now. Stay tuned for more updates. We love you. Subscribe to the channel. Share this with like-minded people. Be safe. Mm.